Namaste. Welcome to yoga. This ancient practice that recognizes that everything is made of the same universal energy, including us. That there's this um, generous presence, this oneness that manifests in this infinite diversity of forms, including our individual forms. And so each of us is a unique and particular expression of the whole. We're not separate. We're perfect just the way we are. We belong right here, right now, all of us, everything. So yoga is this inclusive recognizing and holding of the truth of that. And in yoga, it's the chakras, right? These spinning energy wheels that provide the interface between, we might say, the more universal dimension and the dimension of individual form. That these centers are the yoke, right? Yoga is from yug in Sanskrit, yoke. The yoke or the interface of these different dimensions. And in this practice, We'll attend a bit to the third chakra, Manipura. Oh, I just like saying the word. Manipura in Sanskrit means radiant jewel or lustrous gem. A deep, fiery, golden color. So that's what we get to picture here in our solar plexus, our power center of our being. So Manipura is between the navel and the sternum. Sometimes it's also called the navel chakra. And this is the place of fire, the sun, heat, transformation, right? This is where the raw gets cooked. This is where we digest not only our food, but all of our experiences. This is like the hub of transformative active energy in our being. And so it's the place of action and will, purpose, our personal power, and also our, se- our sense of self, our self-esteem. And there are many ways to open, align, strengthen, balance Manipura, like all of the chakras. One way is just coming to our mats and our regular asana practice is good for all of the chakras. Um, there are also some paths that include mudra, right? The hand, different mudras and um, pranayama, which is working with the breath. So we'll just do a little bit of all of that um, and see how it goes. If you please have two blocks and a strap or things that are like that, and also something to sit on to elevate your sit bones in the beginning as we sit for these few moments together, just to sink our breath, sink our heartbeats, really arrive and tune in. And for our meditation, sitting up, nice long spine, we'll play with a mudra called Matangi Mudra, which is known to balance Manipura Chakra. So find your comfortable seat, and then to take our mudra, you're just gonna interlace your fingers, either way, whichever way calls to you, bring your fingers down, and then you're gonna raise your middle fingers and press those finger pads together, and bring the other hands back, fingers back down. Matangi Mudra. And then we're going to place that right at the solar plexus. You can allow your elbows just to come in and hug your sides for some support. So find that mudra. Find where you'd like to place it on your body. And then gently closing your eyes and coming within your own self right here. And first, just take a few breaths to really land inside your own being. Letting the outside world go, coming within. And just arriving. And then as you stay, just bring your awareness down to your sit bones and really root, root down into the earth like you're standing on your sit bones rooting down 
And take a few breaths here with awareness right of the first chakra, the grounding chakra, muladhara. And as you inhale and exhale, allowing the belly to be soft so it can move. And just watching the breath and seeing if it energetically reaches down to the pelvic floor. On that inhale, the energy gently moves down. And on the exhale, it rises back up. And bringing your awareness to the second chakra, just below the navel. Again, allowing the belly to be soft enough that as you inhale, the breath moves the belly out. And on the exhale, it gently comes back in. And as you observe, maybe you notice the breath also moving the sides of the body and back along the sacrum. The circumferential breath. The breath slowly comes in and the breath slowly moves out. And just allowing your face to be soft, your eyes to be soft, relax the jaw. And then bringing your awareness up to Manipura here at the solar plexus and just follow the breath in and out through the nose with your awareness here in this part of your being. Noticing if the breath moves with ease or if it might feel a little constricted. Does this place feel open? Does this place feel tight or something else? And just see what's there. You might notice a color or an image or just the flavor of being. So these are the first three chakras, the lower chakra triangle, and just allow your awareness for a few more breaths to be in this deep, precious lower portion of your body Allowing the breath to move, watching with no judgment. Eyes staying soft, relaxing the shoulders. And then slowly just allow the mood to start to start to come apart and melt and let your hands come down on your thighs. And just notice how that feels. And then we're gently going to lift the hands and press the palms together, move them into the center of the chest. Take a big, deep inhale in through the nose, filling up your body. And on an exhale, slowly bowing the head down, down to the wisdom of the heart. And on your next inhale, slowly bringing the head back up, releasing the hands down to the thighs and gently, slowly opening the eyes. Thank you. So we're gonna stay in our cross-legged seat. We're gonna stay sitting on something. We're gonna practice a simple energizing breath called Kapalabhati Pranayama or breath of fire, skull shining breath. Doesn't get much more exciting than that. So this is a very energizing breath and there are some people who should not do it. So if you're pregnant, um, if you have high blood pressure, if you have any kind of spinal disorder or respiratory disorder, I would like for you just to do long, slow, deep breathing in and out through the nose and listen to my breath. But if that doesn't apply to you and you'd like to try breath of fire, you may be familiar with this, but let's see how it goes. We're gonna turn our palms up because this is an activating breath. We're gonna have a nice long spine. And so it's like panting through the nose. We let the belly be soft enough that on the inhale, the belly can pooch out. But on the exhale, we sharply draw it back in towards the spine. 
like it snaps back. So I'll let you hear it first and then we'll go through it together. Some people do it slowly, some people do it more quickly. The movement is coming from the belly. So let's try it together. So just gently seal the lips, eyes open or eyes closed, tall spine. Take a nice deep inhale in. Exhale the breath all the way out. And then inhale halfway in, and then exhale sharply to start. Keep it going, just a few more breaths, a few more. And then on your next inhale, take a deep full inhale, fill it up, hold it at the top, and on an, an exhale, gently let all of the breath come out. And just take a moment, see how you feel. Really nice. If you're cross-legged, let's change our legs to the other cross, just to give that side a little bit of a chance. Sit bones tall on what we're sitting on. And then on an inhale, let's reach the arms out and up. So straight with biceps by the ears, really straight elbows, reach up through the fingers, length through both side bodies, draw the floating rib in, ribs in. Maybe start to look up if it's okay on your neck. Reach up past your fingertips as you root down through the sit bones. Take an inhale here, look forward. Take another inhale here, and on your exhale, slowly start to twist to the right. The left hand comes outside the right knee. Just a gentle twist, and see that you don't sacrifice the length in your spine. So we're still rooting down through the sit bones, reaching up through the crown of the head, and the twist comes from the waist, right? So just make sure you're not yanking on your head, you're not leaning the head forward, the head's just gently following the rotation of the spine. And then staying right here, just turn your head to look forward over that front shoulder. Allow the body to unwind. Inhale, reach the arms out and up. Palms turn in. Super straight elbows. Lift through the sides of the body. Maybe look up. Reach up past the fingertips. Take an inhale here. On an exhale, slowly bring your head forward. Take another inhale. Keep that length as you slowly turn to the left. The right hand comes outside the opposite knee, the other hand behind you. And then see if you can really align the spine all the way up through the neck, the head on top. You've got a little bit of leverage on that hand outside the knee to turn at the waist. Again, not yanking on the neck or the head. The head is just following, breathing, rotating, and then staying right here, just slowly head over the shoulder, look forward, and then let the body follow. Thank you. Okay, let's come down on our backs. We're gonna come into Supta Baddha Konasana. So soles of the feet together, come on down on the back. Draw the, the heels in as close as you can towards your tush, and then just rest one hand on the navel, one hand just above. Allow the elbows to relax down. Close your eyes and just land here again. So connect with your breath. The feet are relaxed. The knees are gently, ever so slowly opening with the pull of gravity. Belly soft. Throat soft. Relax the face, the muscles around the eyes. Let your body be heavy, sinking into the earth. And just feel your hands lightly resting on Manipura Chakra 
And just a few more sweet breaths into the center of your core. Filling and emptying. Breathing, being breathed. And then gently blink your eyes open. Bring your hands around your outer thighs. Use your hands just to bring your knees up, feet are flat, feet are hips distance. Just take a breath here in constructive rest. And then we're going to lift one knee and then the other. So the knees are perpendicular. Shins are parallel with the mat. And see if you can get it so your knees are right over your hips, that they're not coming forward. Flex your feet and then arms by the side, flat palms down. Now feel the natural curve of your lower back. But gently tone your belly, draw it in, press your mid back down, even though there should be a little space beneath your lower back, your sacrum. Take an inhale here. Exhale all the breath. And then on an inhale, slowly bring your right heel down, keeping the curve of the back and the mid back pressing down. Slowly bring that foot back up. Inhale the left heel down. Exhale, bring it back up. And so you can see that this is a small movement. Keep going on your own. We're just gently lowering the heel, bringing the knee back up, but we're keeping some tone in the belly, really drawing the middle of the back down, keeping the natural curve of the lower back. And so this is sort of a waking up of the core, the muscles, but in a really gentle way, if you're really concentrating, right, you can feel there's definitely effort, although it's not like extreme crunches, but just a few more. Keep going, waking up this whole front line of the core, concentrating, being right here. Okay, come back right here in the center. Now we're going to reach our arms out to the side in line with our heart, palms up. Take an inhale here, and on an exhale, just let both these come down to the left. So just a gentle twist, your knees might hover, you could place a block underneath them. If you want a little bit more, press the back of your head down and scooch your left shoulder a little bit more to the left. And then be here and just gently draw that right shoulder back and down towards the earth. Slow, smooth breath in and out through the nose. So take another inhale here, and on an exhale, bring the knees back up to center. And just find your center, and then take an inhale here, and on an exhale, letting the knees come down to the right, out in line with the hips or a little bit higher, see what feels right for you. Again, support the knees if you want, and then if you'd like, you can press the back of the head down to draw the right shoulder a little bit to the right. It will help you draw that left shoulder back and down. And with the face soft, letting gravity help us do the work. One more breath right here. And then take an inhale, and on an exhale, bring the knees back up to center. Now, keeping the knees there, we're going to bring our fingertips behind our back of our head. On an inhale, just lift yourself up so the shoulders are off the mat. And then you're going to extend the right leg long. Cross your right elbow outside the left knee and then come back to center. Find the other side, extend the left leg, elbow comes outside right knee, back to center, and just keep going on your own. There are these gentle yogic bicycles. See if you can not like tug on your neck. It's just a little bit of support from the back of the head. You can choose your pace. I like to go really slowly, it's harder, and I can just be more present. But you're welcome to move more quickly if you'd like. Use the breath to help. And we're just gonna go back and forth a couple more times. So really see if you can bring the knee right up to vertical, not past. See if you can lift the elbow up towards the knee. We're playing with lifting one or both shoulders each time. And yes, each one gets a little bit harder. So we're just gonna do one more on each side. <laughs> because by now the core is a little bit warm and awake. Nice. And then come back to center. Hug your knees in. Give yourself a little squeeze. You can roll around a little bit on the lower back. Nice work. And then let's extend the legs long. Reach the arms overhead. 
Spine length, stretch your belly, take a nice big inhale, exhale, sigh it out. <sighs> One more of those. <sighs> and then bring the hands back down, bending the knees. You're welcome just to roll to your side to come up to a seat, or you can bring your hands behind your thighs, pump your legs a little bit, and rock and roll on the spine, a little spinal massage, going the length of the spine, and then slowly coming up, finding a seat, lovely. And then let's swing our legs around and find our child's pose. So big toes touch towards the back of the mat, knees wide, hips distance or wider, and then just lay your body down. The arms come forward, let the elbows come down, let the forehead come down. If it doesn't quite reach the mat, feel free to use a block. And then really let the hips sink back, down on the heels. Land right here. Give yourself to the earth. Deep breaths in and out through the nose. Each exhale, just letting go, letting your weight drop. Now keep the hips this heavy. We're just going to start to reach the hands forward to find length through the side body. Crawl your fingertips out. Look up. Make sure your hands are shoulder distance, flat palms. Bring the forehead back down. Maybe find a little bit more length as you keep the hips heavy. And then take a few breaths to explore the hands. Press through each finger, all the knuckles, the end finger pads, the circumference of the palm. Hug the outer arms in. Roll your triceps down and then repress the index finger and thumb. And keep that whole feel of the hand super straight elbows, and start to come up to all fours. Walk your knees in so you've got hips distance, knees under the hips, wrist creases are right under the shoulders. You might want to turn your hands out a little bit. And then on an inhale, start to bring the chest forward, the groins go back. And on an exhale, press down with the palms, draw the navel into the spine, big cat back, exaggerate the arch, Inhale, slowly opening the spine, coming forward into cow. Exhale, pressing, coiling, rounding into cat. A few more on your own. Take your time. Just see what's here. Let the breath draw the movement through your spine. And then slowly coming back to a neutral position, all fours. And then we're going to walk the knees back a couple inches. Reap, spread the fingers, press the palms, hug the outer arms in. Keep all of that as you slowly lift the hips up and back. Adha Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. And if you like to pedal or wiggle around when you first come into dog, feel free. You can wiggle the hips. You can bend the knees and straighten them, slowly finding our way in, and then eventually coming to stillness. So your feet are hip distance and parallel at the back of the mat, and your heels slightly bow out. Press the palms forward and down to open up under the armpits, lengthen the side body, and lift the hips back and up. You might think of even pressing your upper thighs back. Press your shins back. And we stay here and breathe slowly, opening the shoulders, opening the backs of the legs. A few more breaths. Breathing, finding stability as we open. And then slowly bend the knees, look forward, and step one foot and then the other to the front of the mat, feet hips distance, and just fold forward into your Uttanasana. Put a bend in the legs, clasp opposite elbows. Really let the weight of the elbows draw the torso long and down. Shift the weight towards the toes. Breathe. Change the clasp of the elbows. If you'd like to straighten the legs, feel free to start a little bit or a lot. If you'd like to turn the head side to side, maybe nod it forward and back. 
and then release the hands down. And then we're gonna reach behind the lower back. You can either hook your thumbs or interlace your fingers, bend the elbows, draw the elbows towards each other. We've already got the heart open. And then slowly just play with extending the elbows, not all the way so they're not super straight, opening the front of the collarbones, opening the heart. And then release the hands all the way down, put a slight bend in the knees, shift your weight in your heels, coil your lower spine in and slowly start to roll up one vertebrae at a time, coming to standing, the head is last. Really nice. And coming to the front of your mat, I'm just going to turn to face you, coming into your Tadasana. Big toes touch, heel slightly apart. Feel free to give yourself more width between your feet if that's what your body needs. Root down through all four corners of each foot. Send your inner thighs back as you draw the tailbone down. Lift the sternum. And then on an inhale, we're going to reach the arms out and up, Ordva Hastasana. Find length, root down to the feet, reach up through the hands. And then we're going to take the left wrist with the right hand. Inhale, find even more length. And on an exhale, just gently fold over there to the right, opening up the left side body. See if you can keep both shoulders and the chest facing forward. Breathe it open. Come back up to center. Then we're going to take the opposite wrist. Inhale, lift that wrist up and slowly bending over to the left. Inhale, slowly come back to center. Release the wrist. On an exhale, you're just going to lift the chest, cactus the arms, slight back bend. Take a few breaths here, drawing the tailbone down, rooting through the feet. And then on an inhale, reach up, palms touch, and on an exhale, slow swan dive like you're coming over a cliff. Take the full breath all the way down, Uttanasana. Fold it in, take a breath here. And then on your next inhale, come halfway up, Ardha Uttanasana. So you really wanna place your hands somewhere where you can lengthen the spine. We send the hips back, reach the crown of the head forward, Lengthen the spine, and then can you keep that long spine? Inhale here, and exhale, fold all the way down. And then inhale, sweep the arms out and up. Exhale, hands come down to heart center. Let's try that a couple times on the breath. Inhale, reach the arms. Exhale, take that left wrist over to the right. Inhale through center opposite wrist over to the other side. Inhale through center. Exhale, cactus, lift the heart. Inhale, dive up into the sky. Exhale, slow swan dive all the way down. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, sweep the arms out and up. Exhale, hands come down through heart center one more time. Inhale, reach, find that left wrist. Exhale, over to the right. Inhale through center, opposite wrist, over to the left. Inhale, reach. Exhale, lift the heart. Inhale, dive up. Exhale, up and over, hinging at the hips all the way down. Inhale, halfway up. And then exhale, step back to downward facing dog. All the way back, downward facing dog. And then on an inhale, we're gonna glide forward into our plank pose. So just come forward into plank. You might need to change the length of your stance. Really spread the hands, straight arms. Reach back through the heels, forward through the crown of the head. And then draw the belly in, draw Manipura Chakra in, draw from under the heart to support the pose from underneath, slightly rounding the upper back. And come down on your knees if you need. We're just going to be here for a few more breaths. And then slowly lift the hips up and back, downward facing dog. Bring your feet together at the back of the mat. Inhale the right leg back behind you. And just take a moment here to even the weight in your hands right to left. 
get those hips even, both legs super straight. See how much length you can find. Take an inhale, and then on an exhale, shift forward, bring your knee into your chest and look down. You've got your shoulders over your wrists, the knees coming into the sternum, rounding the back. Now see how you've made all that space. Use it to step that right foot forward, take as many steps as you need, long lunge. This is a great place for both blocks, right? It can feel better to come up a little bit in terms of how the body is put together. So make a choice, blocks or hands down, but can you sink the hips? Make sure you've got enough space that the hips can really come down. The weight in that front heel, draw that right hip back and in and lift the inner left thigh. Lift the sternum, look forward. Now we're slowly gonna bring that back knee down. Move it back an inch or two, pad it if you need, and then just stay here for a few breaths, really letting the hips come forward. So we're lengthening the spine. Got your hands on blocks or the mat. Right, we're finding our way into that left hip flexor. Can you draw your tailbone long and down? Now stay right here, just bring your hands up on that front thigh, and then use the hands on the thigh to gently press, the waist away from that front thigh. So we're still drawing the tailbone down, right? We're trying to create a little bit of space here. We're opening this left hip flexor. We're drawing the floating ribs back. Now, can you keep that space you've just created as you inhale, reach the arms out and up on Janayasana. So again, the biceps are by the ears, strong, straight arms. And if you wanna play with balance, maybe you start to lift the gaze. Maybe looking up towards the sky. Maybe the palms touch overhead or not, your choice. Allowing the hips to keep being heavy, sinking down as you lift with the upper body up towards the sky. Take an inhale here. And then exhale, hands come down to heart center. Take another inhale. And you're gonna to start to come forward. You can take your right hand outside that right knee to get the left elbow across outside the knee and then bring your palms together to find your prayer twist. So right, we're off that front side, we're twisting the waist across over it. We're drawing the tailbone down. Press your palms together and lift your heart into your joined hands as you reach your crown of your head out away from your tailbone. One more breath here, and then slowly come back up to center. Hands come down to frame the front foot. We're gonna flex that right foot and just send the hips straight back. Again, this is another great place for two blocks. Let's just try that, because that can feel so good. So that way we can lengthen the spine, lift the heart, start to lean forward. You can lower the blocks a little bit if you have a little bit more space, or you might choose to start to fold in. Ardha Hanumanasana, half splits. Breathing open that big back of the right leg. One more breath here, and then you're gonna rebend that front leg, straighten the back leg, and then move your right foot a little bit to the right so you have hip distance between your feet. Really bend in that front knee, get the weight in that front heel, get stable, and then inhale, come on up, and find your crescent lunge. So we're bending in the front knee, we're drawing that right hip back and the left hip forward, the tailbone down, lifting up through the arms. And then we're gonna open the arms out to the side and we're gonna bring that left arm under and find our eagle arms, Garudasana. If eagle arms don't work for you, you're welcome to bring the hands outside the shoulders. It's the same opening action for your shoulders. If you're an eagle, gently lifting the elbows, moving the hands away from the face. And then on an inhale, we're gonna straighten the front leg. Exhale, bend it back down. Inhale, straighten. Exhale, rebend. Last time, inhale, straighten. Exhale, rebend. And then release the hands down. Inhale, reach up and over, look up and touch. And then exhale, let it go. Hands come down, frame the front foot, step back, find your downward facing dog. Bring the feet together at the back of the mat. We're gonna inhale the left leg straight back behind. 
So a few breaths to get even in the hands, both elbows straight. See if you can breathe, keep the hips aligned with each other. And then work to find length, open under the armpits, lift that back leg, take an inhale here, and then exhale, come forward, knee into chest. So look down, move your shoulders right over your wrist creases, draw the belly in, draw the knee towards the sternum, big cat back, and then use that space to slowly bring the left foot forward, as many steps as you need, long lunge. Find your blocks if you're gonna use them. Weight in that front heel, really bend that front knee, but also lift that inner back thigh. Reaching back to that back heel, lifting the sternum, looking forward, drawing that left hip back and in, letting the hips come down slowly. Breathing, don't forget to breathe. And then letting that back knee come down, Move it back an inch or two, pat it if you need, and then just keep the hands here either on the mat or blocks and just let the hips sink forward. It might be subtle, but right, we're finding our way into that right hip flexor now. Tailbone still drawing long, heart lifted. And then can you keep the hips this forward, just come on up, one hand on top of the other on that front thigh. And then we're pressing gently to move the waist back from that front thigh. Tailbone still drawing down, lifting the heart, creating more space. And can you keep that space as you inhale, reach the arms out and up on Janayasana. And if you wanna play with balance, with the gaze, maybe starting to look up, you keep reaching from your whole underbody, underarms up, maybe the palms touch, Sinking down, supported but rooted in the lower body. Supported and reaching in the upper body. Take an inhale here, and then exhale, hands come down to heart center. Take another inhale, start to twist to the left, and then it's helpful if you wanna bring this left hand outside that left thigh to cross, right? We're not forcing anything, but a little bit of support to cross that elbow outside the knee, and then bring the palms together. Keep drawing that left hip back, twisting at the waist, lifting the heart up towards your joined hands, crown of the head still reaching, breathing. Beautiful. And then slowly come back up to center. Hands come down, flex that front foot, send your hips back, find your blocks if you need them, move them under your shoulders. Right, so we don't wanna round. We're sending the groins back, lengthening through the front and the back of the spine, opening the back of that left leg, making choices about staying on blocks, or you might lower the blocks, you might come down, what feels right for your body today. One more breath here, then lift yourself up, rebend that front foot, Straighten the back leg and then move the left foot a little bit to the left. Rebend that front knee, really firm in this front heel. Get rooted, stable so you can come on up, crescent lunge. Now we're drawing the left hip back, the right hip forward, the tailbone long, the floating ribs in. And then slowly opening the arms. We're gonna bring that right arm under, Find your eagle arms or your modification. Can you gently lift the elbows? Shear the head back as you move the hands away from the face. And then inhale that front leg straight. Exhale, bend it down. Inhale, straighten. Exhale, down. Inhale, straighten. Exhale, down. Then release the hands. Inhale, reach all the way up, maybe look up and touch. And then exhale, let it go. Hands come down through heart center, plant the hands, step back, downward facing dog. Oh, find your center, find your breath. Okay, we're gonna come down on our knees. We're gonna interlace our fingers. So bring your elbows down so they're about shoulders, distance beneath your shoulders. Interlace your fingers. 
Walk your knees back a little bit, and then just make sure you've really got the elbows under the shoulders. Press your outer wrists down into the mat, and then you're gonna step your right foot back, long leg, left foot back, and you're gonna find your forearm plank. So, oh joy, forearm plank. So my tendency is to put my hips up. Your tendency might be to sink your hips down. Let's all try to find that long line somewhere in the middle as best as we can. Reach back through the heels. Gaze is slightly up and forward. Now can you slowly walk the feet in into your dolphin? Take little steps. Keep your head off the hands, right? The head stays lifted. And you walk the feet in. And notice as we walk the feet in, right, it's going to pitch our weight forward over our hands. So we have to press through the outer wrists, the outer forearms, like dogs, to open up the armpits. Dolphin pose. It's like you're, the knife edge of the outer wrist is pressing down. Find your breath. Okay, slowly we're gonna walk back out, back out to our dolphin plank. So take your time, see if you can find that long line again. A few breaths here. Draw your core in, hold it, feel the fire, feel the heat. One more breath. And then bring your knees down. And bring your knees together and let's come to child's pose with the knees together. This time let's put our hands back, arms by the side, forehead comes down. Let your shoulders relax. Find your breath, let your breath find you. Just notice whatever's happening in your body and your being. And then bring your hands flat underneath your shoulders just gently press yourself up, nice tall spine. Let's take a few cat cows here. This is one of my favorites. So we're going to let our hands slide along our thighs. So on an inhale, hand slides back, heart lifts, maybe the gaze goes up, and then exhale, rounding, hand slide down over the front of the knees. Find that big cat back, tuck your chin in. Inhale, sliding the hands back, open the front of the body. Here I am. Exhale, slowly coiling, rounding, tucking in. This little inner cute, here I am, a couple more on your own. Find the breath, find the spine. And then just coming back to a neutral spine. Come forward, place your hands down. We're gonna tuck our toes. We're gonna push back into a little crouch. So we're on the balls of our feet. Maybe play with balancing and bring the hands to heart center, pressing them into one another, bring the spine tall, and we're going to play with standing. So you might stay on the balls of your feet. You might need to drop your heels, right? Using all of our core, our stabilizing muscles. Take a stand, find length, and then slowly bring the heels down. Okay, wonderful. Now, if you would find your two blocks and have them at the front of your mat, that would be great. And let's stand in Tadasana at the front of the mat to find your center, find your root. And then you're going to bring your hands to your hips. We're going to step the left foot back about three and a half feet. It's different for different people. And you're going to line up heel to heel, and you're going to turn that back foot in almost so it's parallel because we want to be able to bring this left hip forward. So we really have to turn that back foot in. Draw your tailbone down, lift your chest. See if you can get the hips even. See if you can square your chest forward. Take an inhale. And on an exhale, we're gonna come down to Parsvottanasana. So send the hips back. There's a little bit of softness in that front knee. Go slowly. See if you can keep the hips even. And then you can bring your hands down right on those blocks under your shoulders. Keep drawing that right hip back especially. Lengthen the spine, so you can hang out here. This might feel yummy, this might be your edge. You can bring your blocks a little bit lower. If you have a little bit more space in that right hamstring, or you may play with folding it down and in. So your version of Parsvottanasana. And if you tend to hyperextend, just make sure you're not hyperextending that front knee. It's not bent, but we're not jamming it back. Keep drawing that right hip back. 
Keep lengthening the spine. Now just as mindfully coming up. So do put a little softness in that front knee now. Can you play with bringing your hands to your hips? Slowly coming up all the way. Aha. Staying right here. We're going to keep this right hand on the right hip. Inhale the left arm straight up. We're coming right back down into our twisting triangle. Pavrita Trikonasana. So use that hand on this right hip to keep pulling it back. We're going to come halfway down. Find all that length. And then you're going to use your block at some height. It's going to be either inside or outside that front foot. You might have it inside right under your shoulder. Right? This might be your twisting triangle. You might have it a little lower outside. Right? Or you might be someone who actually brings the hand down. There's no better or right way. You want to stay stable through the hips. Twisting at the waist lengthening the spine and breathing. Keep lengthening the spine, both legs strong. One more breath, now look down. Bring both hands down, slight bend in that front leg so you can walk the back foot in, feet together. Inhale halfway up, exhale forward fold. Inhale, sweep the arms out and up. Exhale, hands come down, Tadasana Mountain Pose. Okay, let's try the other side. Get your two blocks ready. Hands on the hips. Let's set the right foot back. So you'll know what length. We all need a little bit of different length. I probably have three and a half feet. And again, you want to turn that back foot in so you can bring this right hip all the way even with the left. Long spine. Take an inhale. And then on an exhale, starting to lean forward. Come forward with the heart. You've got the hands on the hips to be sending both hips back. Come parallel with the mat, and then you can bring your hands down. So first, just get comfortable here. See if you can even the hips. So it will mean drawing that left hip back a little bit more than you think. Crown of the head reaching forward. And again, stay right here, or play with the height of your blocks, or play with coming down and folding in. Wherever you are, rooting through both feet, keep some weight in that back foot. Being mindful not to hyperextend that front knee. Notice where there's rounding in the back. Can you at least make the effort to lengthen, to unfurl and find length? Now, slightly bend that front knee, press in that front foot, bring your hands to your hips and slowly come all the way up. Uh -huh. Okay, nothing else changes. We're just gonna inhale that right arm straight up. Exhale, reach out, long spine. Again, don't hyperextend that front knee. Come parallel with the mat and then make a choice about where you want your block to open up into your Pavrita Trikonasana, twisting triangle. The block can be inside or outside. You want to make sure it's right under the shoulder. And then you want to send that left hip back. Lengthen the spine. Reach out through the crown of the head. Twist at the waist. Reach up. Maybe look up. One more breath. And then look down. Both hands come down. Slight bend in that front knee so you can step the back foot in. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, sweep the arms out and up. Reach. And then exhale, hands come down to heart center. Tadasana. Just close your eyes for a moment and feel. Notice what's right here. Hmm. Blink your eyes open. And then I'll reverse down to our little crouch. So just press your hands into one another, bend the knees, go slowly, hug the outer ankles, the outer thighs in. And then let's just go ahead and have a seat. Really nice. So don't be scared. We're just going to do one Navasana. It's more to find that shape in our body. We've already done plenty of core. So bring your fingertips behind your knee tendons. Really get up here on your sit bones. Lean back, keeping the spine tall. Bring your knee, your shins parallel. So as always, the work is to bring the back body up into the front body. Maybe release the hold on the legs or not. Your choice. Reach forward. Keep drawing the belly in. Now we're going to come down to Ardha Navasana. This is always really hard for you. You can bring your hands back and give yourself a little bit of support. That's a great way to start to work your way into this pose. Otherwise, arms stay forward, eyes in line with toes. 
draw the belly down and in, and then just as slowly and mindfully coming back up, release it down, really nice. Okay, so let's come into our Dandasana staff pose, and I'm gonna recommend that you sit on something so you have enough room to do these seated postures right with this length in the lower spine. We're gonna bend the right leg and we're gonna come into our Janu Shirsasana. So you press the right foot into the left inner thigh. If this knee is super high, ha ha, give it a little bit of support from a block. And then we're gonna inhale the arms out and up. And then exhale, start to come forward. So this is the place for the strap, right? If you want to strap it around the front of your foot, and then you can really lengthen the spine. Open the heart. If you can hold your foot, you might do that, or you might start to fold in. Belly soft, face soft, mind is soft. And just being here, we're in the shape, allowing gravity and breath and the universe to do the work. And then on an inhale, you're gonna slowly bring yourself back up. I'm gonna come off just so I can show you. So stay in this shape, we're gonna bend the left leg and then you're gonna bend the right knee and the foot a little bit in more. So you can really get up on both sit bones like this. And you're gonna take one hand on either side of that left foot and you're gonna come up and you're gonna bring that shin parallel. So here's, there's a bunch of work here. One is we're like this, right? So hopefully you're sitting on something or not. You're finding the muscles to draw the spine long. And then you're bringing the knee under the shoulder. You can also be using a strap here if you're not quite able to hold the foot. So choices, you can keep the knee bent. We're gonna go into a gentle twist. You can keep the knee bent or before we twist, if you wanna play with extending that leg, into Kramchasana, right? This is Heron pose. So we're drawing the back body and the front body, lifting the heart. And then whether you've got this leg bent or straight, take your opposite hand and you're gonna place it outside that left foot. So you can be doing this bent. Keep your waist fixed. The only thing that's moving is you're twisting at the waist. Hi, hello you. You might even play with looking back. You can play with pointing your toes or flexing your toes. If you've got the leg bent, that's perfect too. And can you stay with your body like this? Just look forward and then just play with extending the leg, lifting the arms. Nice, bring it down. Let's try the other side. Starting in Dandasana, staff pose, tall spine. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna bend the left leg, foot inside the upper thigh. Again, feel free to put something under this knee. And again, feel free to use your strap. We're gonna inhale, lift. Exhale, can you keep that lift and reach as you come forward, either with your strap, with your toes, with slowly bringing yourself down and in. If you wanna work more on coming down and you need to bend that front knee, that's another option. There are lots of ways to do this. So find your way in, see what feels good. Be here and breathe. Right, we move into this next shape, one after another, and then we arrive, we breathe and we observe, just staying present and soft. Then inhale, slowly bring yourself up, maybe give yourself some support. Now bend that right leg a little bit, so you can draw that left knee a little bit closer in and your foot in. And then here we go, bringing our spine long, one side on either side of that right foot, and then bring your shin parallel. And then find that work of bringing the back body into the front body and lifting the heart and drawing the knee in, right? We could just stay here. This actually feels really good, but we're not quite cooked yet. So let's finish off this side. So again, you can stay with this knee bent or you can play with, and you can use a strap here. You can use your strap for Kranchasana. Lift the spine, lift the heart. And then whether you've got this leg straight or bent, take your opposite hand outside the foot or heel. 
Can you keep the lower body stable? We're just twisting at the waist. You can point or flex that foot. You might play with looking back. Breathe it open and then go ahead, look forward. Just play for a moment, lift it, let it go. Really nice. Last time into our Dandasana staff pose. Long spine, straight legs reaching through the inner and outer feet. Inhale the arms out and up and then exhale starting to come forward. Again, you might use your strap here around the balls of the feet to lengthen the spine. You might be able to grab some toes. You might choose to start to fold in. If you start to fold forward, it's really nice to let the front of the brain rest on something. So you might use a block so we don't have to hold up this heavy head, the neck. You can just breathe open the backs of the legs. Pashimottanasana. And then slowly using some support to come up. Let's scooch forward. So we've got bent knees with our heels right at the front of the mat. Bring your arms forward and uncoil the spine one vertebra at a time. Supporting, right? We activated our core. It can hold us. We have the strength. Bring slowly down, all the way down. Just bring the feet in. Feet are hips distance and parallel. Maybe reach down, see if you can feel your heels. So we're setting up for bridge. Lift the toes, press all four corners of each foot down. Bring the toes down. And then really pressing the, the big toe mound and the inner heel. Like we're standing on the inner foot to lift the hips up slowly. Keeping the tailbone long, we're sending the tailbone to the back of the knees. Now here you can grab the sides of the mat and draw your shoulder blades under. You can keep your arms bent, fingertips pointing up, if that helps you to press down to lift up. Or you can reach underneath, interlace your fingers, and then roll one shoulder under and then the other. Maybe start to press the palms together even. And can you stand on the inner foot let the inner thighs keep draping down. We're not clenching the glutes. We're standing to lift. Big breath. Eyes are soft. And stay right here. Release the hands. Reach them overhead, backs of the palms down. Now from the top of the spine. One vertebra at a time, uncoiling. Slowly, slowly. Coming all the way down and then reaching the arms out to the side, palms up. Take an inhale here. On an exhale, we're just gonna let both knees come over to the right. So outer right foot, inner left. Gentle diagonal pull through the side body, stay here. Or if you wanna reach overhead and find a wrist, find a little more stretch, you can draw that left hip down and away. As you reach the hands up, We've got the arms overhead, reach them back out, slowly bring the knees back up to center. Take an inhale here. On the exhale, slowly coming down to the other side, outer left foot, inner right. Just be right here. Or if you want a little more stretch, reaching above the head, finding the opposite wrist, drawing that right hip down and away. Draw the tailbone long. Oof. You've got the arms overhead, bring them out, slowly bring the knees back up to center. And then if you would find your block and slide it the low long way by pressing the feet down just enough to get that block under the sacrum. Get it the right, and then bring your arms out to the side, palms up, draw the shoulder blades slightly underneath. Keep that natural curve in your lower back as you lift one knee and then the other. You can stay right here, or if you feel stable and you wanna lift the legs straight, one and then the other, and then just closing your eyes and letting your awareness come back inside yourself. Coming within. Soft, even breath in and out through the nose. Mm 
and bringing your awareness to the solar plexus, Manipura. And just letting your awareness rest lightly. That powerful, lustrous gem, the center of your being. No agenda, just being here and breathing, noticing. And then slowly blinking the eyes open and bending one knee and then the other and bringing one foot down and then the other and pressing the feet just enough to lift the hips off the block, slide the block out. Let the sacrum come back down to the earth. And then setting up for your final pose. So classical is legs long. Feet about hips distance and we let the feet flop open. If you have any weird sensation in your lower back, you're welcome to roll up your blanket and put it behind your knee. That can feel lovely. If your head is tilting back at all, you also can place your blanket Gently, just a very thin layer behind your head. So get any props that you need. Lay yourself long. Close the eyes. You might choose to cover them. And then arms out to the side, either just a little bit away from your body or maybe straight out from your heart. A little bit of external rotation in the shoulders so the palms can face up. And then just take a deep breath, filling your body all the way. Sip in a little bit more. Hold it at the top. And then go ahead, open your mouth, sigh it out. Shavasana.
And then not moving, staying deep inside, just letting your awareness start to drift back into your body, back into the space where you are. Find a few deeper, fuller breaths. Maybe a small movement, fingers or toes. Maybe you stretch the arms overhead, find length through the body. <sighs> and then bending the knees, reaching the right arm out overhead, slowly rolling to your right side, resting your head in step, just pausing for a moment. Then using your left palm to press down gently. Keep the eyes closed. Let the head be the last thing to come up. And just find a comfortable seat. Let your sit bones come to the mat. Spine gently rising, staying inside. Just noticing the effects of the practice. Thanking yourself your sweet self for coming to your mat. I thank you. And then gently lifting the palms and pressing them into one another and bringing them into the heart, the yummy heart. Namaste. Blinking your eyes open when you're ready. Thank you for sharing your practice with me.